Morning guys, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. Out here at the forge again today. What I thought I'd do today is show you guys how to make a tomahawk head. And this one is made out of an old used horseshoe rasp. We're going to go through the process of making this today. But I wanted to go ahead and show you the finished product before we start. Stay with me. So the main object of the game now is just to get this lap that we're going to put in our, that's going to form our eye. We just want to get that a pretty nice, even thickness with the width and length that we need. And if we're a little bit longer, that's okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put a concavity in this after we do our fold over where our lap's going to be. We're going to put a concavity in this, and what that's going to do is it's going to help when you wrap that into a circle to keep it from bowing out. If you notice, some tomahawk heads are bowed out, and we don't want that. We want it to be a nice closed circle. I'll show you an example of that in just a minute. So when I'm talking about a nice closed loop, what I'm talking about is how this thing is tapered in all the way down instead of being bell-shaped outward. You start with a flat piece of metal, it's going to want to bell out on you. If you start with a concave piece of metal, it'll hold that barrel shape and that's what you want around your tomahawk. So we're going to make that tomahawk eye exactly the way we made this fro eye except instead of making a fro we're going to put a tomahawk head on it. So it'll be virtually the same thing, same process, same forge welding, everything. Okay, this is our lap. This is where we're going to weld. This will wrap around and weld to the other side. Again, we're just making sure we got everything nice and straight and even. And that's going to be our lap joint. Now we're going to put our concavity in. Okay, we want to turn our flap over. A little better off with a hammer like this for this job. And we just want to put that against the shoulder. And make that somewhat concave right there. Well, we're going to roll that over. You see a little bit of concavity in there. That's what we want. Okay, we'll give her one more heat here. Now, we're going to weld that, and then we'll bring that eye back to center a little bit better. Let's heat it up and get it rounded out a little bit better first. Okay, now we're getting where we need to be. Now we kind of want to close that gap right there as best we can. Before we forge weld it, we don't want that air gap in there. That may require me to pound it just a little bit off center to begin with. And if it does, that's okay. But I want to get rid of as much of that gap as I can before I start my welding process. Okay, well I've got my fire heating up to really, really hot. I want to come through here and I want to really get this thing cleaned up for a minute. Then I'm going to heat it up for the first heat and I'm going to flux it. Still got a little bit of a gap in there I don't like. When we heat it up we can close that gap right before we flux. Okay, so now that we got it cleaned up we're going to flux the area that we're getting ready to weld and I'm using a product called SureWeld much more reliable for forge welding than borax not near as old school 
but a lot more reliable. And I want to get that in every joint, even a little bit to the inside if I can, where that crack is. We don't want to leave any of that stuff on our anvil. Okay, now we're trying to heat this thing up to white hot till it's almost to the melting point. And we got to be careful because we've got that eye back there that's right in probably the hottest part of that fire and that's not where I want it. I want it back a little bit. I want this area I'm getting ready to weld, I want that right in the middle of that white hot fire. Again, the difference between welding heat and melting heat ain't a whole lot. Again, I'm just tapping this thing really light to begin with. Okay, let's clean it up. Get ready for another heat. We're looking pretty good right now. Looks like we got a really good weld on the edge there. Now we ought to have a pretty darn good weld. Okay, once we get this thing heated back up again, we're going to take the eye back over to that ball peen hammer that we formed our eye around. We're just going to straighten it up, smooth it out, make sure it's the way we want it, try to get it centered on the blade, and then we're going to start working on the front half or the bit of our tomahawk.
make sure that we got our complete initial profile on this thing as far as our blade goes and it's fairly sharp before we heat treat it. Okay, so all I'm really doing now is I'm just checking my grind geometry here because I do everything by hand. So I want to make sure that whatever I've done, I've pretty much kept it even. I'm a little bit off on this side, just here at the bottom, not much. We can fix that pretty easy. And we're getting really close now to heat treating this thing, giving it a down and dirty heat treat. But I'm trying to get a decent convex edge on this thing. And I'm getting pretty close now to what I want. We'll be able to put the final edge on after heat treat. Okay, all I'm doing now is just really kind of putting my final edge I want on here before I heat treat this. Just real slow, easy strokes with a mill file in circular fashion. Close enough for me, fellas. All right, we're just going to give this thing a down, dirty heat treat. We're going to heat it up till it's an orange color, mainly the blade, not the eye. And we're going to quench it in oil, blade first. Okay, for this, I'm going to turn the blowers off. I'm just going to drop the blade right down in the coals right there, just like that, and just let it heat up slow until the whole thing turns orange. Okay, this is exactly what I'm looking for. That blade is a dull orange color. The eye is not red hot at all. I want it to stay pretty soft and flexible, but I want that blade bit to be really nice and hard. Now we'll take that out and we'll dunk that in oil blade first. Brush him down, let him air dry. Well, I appreciate you guys joining me today for another video out here at the Forge in our blacksmithing series on how to make a tomahawk head. And we just had an advanced blacksmithing class out here. We had Atlee Miller, a full-time Amish blacksmith out here, giving us some really good one-on-one -on -one training. And, you know, his forge welding training was just definitely worth the ticket price alone. I'm really, really happy with the way the forge weld turned out on this tomahawk head. It's seamless. You can't see it at all. There's no difference in material thickness. Um, I think it's a great, great forge weld, and I attribute that directly to Atlee Miller's training. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, for my friends, supporters, and sponsors. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.